Hey everyone, so in this video we are going to talk about the symptoms of coronavirus and the vulnerable group who are at risk. So let's first understand how this virus enters our body. So you see that the virus generally contains the genetic material, the DNA or the RNA covered by an outer layer. So the purpose of this virus is to enter host cell, your cell, so that it can start replicating and after replication it comes out of the cell and the cell dies. Now that being said, this virus cannot do anything without a host. It needs a host, host cell to function or to continue. So if you get infected with a virus, you might experience some symptoms including cough and fever. Fever because when your immune system is trying to fight uh, infection or virus, it creates a lot of inflammation in the body and fever is a result of that inflammation. And you might also experience shortness of breath because this virus attacks your lungs. So you have this tiny little air sacs in your lungs. So the oxygen that you inhale passes across the thin lining of these air sacs and enters your blood vessels. And that's how your blood receives the oxygen and this oxygen is then carried around the body. But when you get infected, this infection uh, can cause the air sacs to become inflamed and, uh, and the air sacs will actually fill up with the liquid or the pus and that prevents or inhibits the oxygen from entering the blood. So that's why people with uh, respiratory issues should be extremely careful with this virus. And you might also uh, have to be careful if you have any sort of uh, underlying disease like heart disease or cardiovascular problems because like I mentioned earlier this virus attacks your lungs and that affects the levels of oxygen in your blood. So people with cardiovascular uh, disease should be extremely careful as well. And if you have a weak immune system, then even uh, weak immune system can make you highly vulnerable or susceptible to these viruses and infections. Or if you have any sort of underlying chronic problems, like I mentioned, respiratory problems or hypertension, diabetes, cancer, all these underlying chronic uh, diseases can also make you more vulnerable and susceptible to these viruses and infections. So you have to be extremely careful about that. So now that being said, you need to make sure that you have a strong immune system because it's very, very important. So certain vitamins and minerals can be really beneficial to make sure that your immune system is strong enough. So you can actually include uh, some vitamins and minerals like vitamin C. It's, uh, it's known to boost your immune system and it is also antiviral and can also reduce the duration of cold. So vitamin C can be a major addition to your diet. And uh, vitamin D can also strengthen your immune system. And you can also include some micronutrients like zinc. Zinc is very, very important for a strong immune system and if you are deficient in zinc then you are more susceptible to all these infections and viruses so make sure that you include good amount of zinc in your diet so and zinc is also important for the fu proper functioning of t cells which are a important part of your immune system to defend against viruses so make sure that you get a good amount of uh, nutrients in your diet so that you can prevent uh, all these uh, viruses. I'm sure it's uh, extremely important to make sure that you get all these vitamins and uh, you can also include some probiotics. These are the good bacteria which will suppress the growth of uh, pathogenic bacteria in your body and extremely good for your digestive health and also your immune system. So make sure that you take care of all these uh, factors and stay home and stay safe. Hope this video was informative and if you have any questions, please uh, reach out to me uh, or you can just put a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.